Hello there and welcome to Lake Update. Lake Mead has seen a steady rise in water levels over the past few days after the release of a huge number of gallons of water from Arizona's Glen Canyon Dam. A video posted by the social media channel Las Vegas locally shows the enormous amount of water being redistributed. A viral clip has been viewed more than 350,000 times since it was posted Sunday. The video's caption reads, Lake Mead has risen over two feet in the last five days after the release of billions of gallons of water from Arizona's Glen Canyon Dam into the Grand Canyon. The released water is expected to flow through the Grand Canyon and replenish sandbars and beaches. It will also help to move sediment downriver all the way down to Lake Mead, which lies on the border between Nevada and Arizona. This release of water is part of the wider effort by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation to increase the lake's water levels. This process is known as a high-flow experiment. The Bureau undertakes these experiments sporadically, depending on how much water is available. Lake Mead, which has experienced record low water levels in recent weeks, is a reservoir on the Colorado River and was formed by the Hoover Dam. Created in the 1930s, it's the largest reservoir in the U.S. by volume. Lying on the Nevada-Arizona border, Lake Mead provides essential water for drinking and agriculture for around 25 million people across the Southwest. Andrea Achille, an associate professor of the Department of Chemical and Environmental Engineering at the University of Arizona, previously spoke to Newsweek about the reasons for the fall in water levels. Prolonged drought and overallocation have dramatically reduced the amount of water in the Colorado River and the stored water in Lake Mead and Lake Powell, she said. They are the largest reservoirs in the U.S. and are essential to the management of the Colorado River Basin. We are experiencing the driest conditions in the last 1,200 years. Lake Mead is fed by meltwater from the Rockies, but a significant amount of water is needed to help refill the lake. A research economist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, Tom Corinan, previously told Newsweek, statewide snowpack in Colorado is about 120% of normal this year, which is a good thing. But refilling Lake Mead and Lake Powell will take years of above average snowfall. He continued, we're definitely hoping for a run of good years, but the long-term outlook is not good. On the basis of climate models, researchers have been predicting this disaster for decades. What's scary is that it's all happening faster than we expected. An extra pulse of water was sent through the Grand Canyon this week, part of a Bureau of Reclamation high-flow experiment designed to move and redeposit sand and sediment from the Glen Canyon Dam in northern Arizona. The big release of water from the dam is the first since 2018 and comes in response to forecasts for an above-average spring snowmelt in the Rocky Mountains. Sediment carried and moved by high flows helps to rebuild beaches and sandbars, which provide habitat for wildlife in the Grand Canyon. The restored beaches are also important for ensuring enough campsites exist for the canyon's many rafters and boaters. The extra water comes from Lake Powell, the nation's second-largest reservoir. Before the Colorado River was dammed to create the reservoir, snowmelt from the Rocky Mountains would often cause a natural surge of sediment-laden water each spring. The ecosystem is generally familiar with having a big spring flood, said Sinjin Eberl, Southwest Communications Director at the Conservation Group American Rivers. It snows all winter, that snow runs off, you have big floods. With that natural cycle being cut off, we've had to try to simulate these big, high floods. Eberl's organization recently named the Grand Canyon section of the Colorado River as the nation's most endangered river, partially due to the lack of recent high-flow experiments there. American Rivers receives funding from the Walton Family Foundation, which also funds a portion of KUNC's Colorado River coverage. It certainly is a sigh of relief, Eberl said especially because the damage to the canyon over the last couple of years has been pretty dramatic. This spring's high-flow experiment was carried out over 72 hours from April 24th through April 27th. Water releases from Glen Canyon Dam were planned to be as high as 39,500 cubic feet per second during the experiment, compared to typical April releases from the dam that run between 8,000 and 15,000 cubic feet per second. Flow data comes from the Bureau of Reclamation, the federal agency that manages water in the West. Reclamation officials declined to be interviewed for this story. 
Record snowfall in the Rocky Mountains has bred optimism about the amount of water added to the Colorado River this year. About two-thirds of the river begins as snow in the state of Colorado, where snowfall this year has surpassed 150% of the long-term average. As a result, summer inflows at Lake Powell are projected to be 177% of average, a forecast that triggered the decision to run a high-flow experiment this year. A set of four tubes known as the River Outlet Works allows extra water to flow through the Glen Canyon Dam. The flows are designed to take advantage of extra wet years and help wildlife habitat downstream of the dam. The high flow experiment began before much of that snowmelt entered Lake Powell, though. John Rickenbach, an environmental consultant with a focus on Lake Powell and the Colorado River, said the experiment could have been carried out a few weeks later when more snowmelt had melted into the river just to be safe. All they're really doing is concentrating the flow that otherwise would have occurred a little more spread out into a smaller period of time. Rickenbach said, if they were going to do that early in April, that could have caused a difficulty for launching boats. But because they did it late in April, that was a big help. Dropping water levels at Powell's marinas have threatened to halt operations by stranding boat ramps above the waterline. Despite this year's strong snowfall and flows, trouble still lingers for the Colorado River and Lake Powell, which fell to a record low this spring. Climate change has fueled 23 years of dry conditions in the region, leaving state and federal officials struggling to agree on significant cutbacks to allocation of water from the river. Analysts agree that it will take more than one snowy year to substantially fix the Colorado River crisis. It's great to see a big snowpack. Climate scientist Brad Udall told KUNC in January, we would need five or six years at 150% snowpack to refill these reservoirs, and that is extremely unlikely. Lake Oroville at 91% capacity, DWR increases water releases. A heavy snow melt has triggered more water releases from Lake Oroville this week. The first release through the spillway in four years happened in March with 15,000 cubic feet per second, CFS, were released. The California Department of Water Resources upped this amount this week. On Wednesday, 18,000 CFS were released, and 20,000 CFS on Thursday. It makes you feel a lot better when you see it full versus when you see it empty, said Kevin McCarthy who lives in Oroville. As of Thursday, Lake Oroville was at 91% capacity. This was the highest McCarthy has seen it since he moved nearby three years ago. It just looks so much better, said McCarthy. It is a great place to walk up here. So will rivers downstream be able to handle this extra flow? DWR said yes. The feather flows into the Sacramento, the Sacramento flows into the bay, and then the San Joaquin it's coming from the south, said UC Davis Professor of Land, Air and Water Resources Greg Pasternak. The DWR said despite the increase, the Sacramento River will remain at its normal conditions, so there is no concern for flooding. It can easily handle this amount of flow and probably a lot more, Pasternak told CBS 13. Lake Oroville is currently at around 878 feet. Full capacity is at 900 feet. The DWR expects it to be full this spring. I feel like a little kid on Christmas, said Carol Robinson who lives in Oroville. It is just a beautiful day and all the rain that we have had. The lake is finally so full. The DWR will continue releasing water to make room for the snowmelt. Since December 1st, Lake Oroville's storage has increased more than 215 feet and gained over 2.1 million acre feet of water. The DWR's hydrology forecasting team works closely with the State Water Project, SWP, operations team to monitor reservoir inflows and model impacts to the water system. The DWR said it will adjust releases as needed of Lake Oroville to prevent flooding impacts to the Feather River and downstream communities.